I give you the return of my Writer's Journey series. That's right, it's episode 5, The Eclecticness Strikes Back. Bet you've been wondering what I was going to do with that E-word for my mimicking of the Star Wars titles for my first 9 or 10 or so Writer's Journey episodes. Hope you've been enjoying the journey that I've been on. Today's video will also serve as a hashtag Preptober hashtag NaNoWriMo 2021 video. But I want to start by thanking you all as an audience. You're so awesome. You're so supportive. You leave comments down below. You click on the like button. You tell me nice things on a regular basis. And I appreciate that. But you know you are allowed to be even more honest, even more harsh, more brutal. And you don't have to always be nice. You can tell me that you don't like something. Or you can attempt to discourage me from taking certain steps in my writer's journey if you would like to because we are now at a junction in which I have to admit that you are all so nice and so supportive that I may have become somewhat confused lately. I was on a clear path for Project Peanut Butter, as I was calling it. And then several people said nice things to me about how they would like to read a fantasy series or sci-fi series or something else from me, even though I was dead set on writing that modern mystery, maybe suspense horror type of story. And I appreciate all that support. But what happened was my brain got all excited and I got a little sidetracked. And I have gone out of my way to outline and plan a lot of stories and a lot of books. And you might think I'm going a little crazy here over the line, but a lot of series as well. Of course, this isn't really a bad thing. I like spending a lot of time in planning, but I have to admit one of my greatest weaknesses is that I spend more time planning than I do writing on a regular basis. If you're also a writer, you may know what I'm talking about. It's easy to get into the world building and thinking about the characters and getting involved with all the possibilities and coming up with different branching options, sort of like a multiverse of madness, what they've been doing in the MCU with the What If series and the Loki series and maybe with that Doctor Strange movie that's going to come out, you know, envisioning all those possibilities for your characters and stories. But anyway, I think I got bogged down a little in all of that. I've also been reading too much, you know, at some point as we get close to the new year celebration time, people are going to be announcing their resolutions for next year. I'm just going to go ahead and declare one of my biggest goals is going to be to read less, to read less. <laughs> it's like I've gotten addicted to reading all the time, and I do love reading books and reviewing them and talking about them, but my goodness, it gets in the way of my writing time. My other greatest weakness as a writer, the thing that is most getting in the way of my professional writing career, has got to be my eclectic nature. As both a reader and a writer, because I end up wanting to write all these things in these different genres. And I thought I had taken care of that with the last Writer's Journey video. But then I got all those ideas in my head. Luckily, after the eclecticness struck back, I now have a great victory that I can share. And that is my short story, The Ghost of Walt Whitman, was published in the collection We're Not Home. And with that, it has solidified my desire to focus on horror. Because having written that that story and getting it published with other horror writers and been networking with the other horror writers and enjoying that, I've realized that a lot of the stories that I want to tell have mystery suspense elements to them. And I believe that it would be a lot of fun to just go ahead and twist those since according to Amazon, I am one of the 13 most twisted minds on the internet now. <laughs> the description for the book, We're Not Home. It would be fun to twist those ideas, to turn them up a notch on the horror scales so that I'm not just writing a mystery suspense, but something horrific, something with some horror elements in there. Again, thank you all for your support. I appreciate that I was inspired to plan out more novels, stories, characters, series, and things for the future. Because my brain actually loves to just let those sit for a while. And what'll happen is, and I might as well just say we're gonna, we're now transitioning into the hashtag Preptober stuff for hashtag NaNoWriMo 2021. And that is my brain will be thinking when I'm driving to work, when I'm driving home, and I've got a moment to have my own thoughts, I will have to get out a sticky note or note card or something and jot things down. Sometimes when I'm driving, I have to stop somewhere, 
pull out my phone and use the notes function and I have to type out notes on my phone because these characters will come up in my mind and start having potential scenarios or I'll think of a situation where two characters could talk to each other and my brain just gets actively into it. The characters start having the dialogue. I'm imagining the scene and I don't want to lose it because in the past I know there have been moments when I wasn't able to write things down and I've lost some good dialogue and potential issues. This also so will happen of course when I'm trying to go to sleep at night or I'll wake up having had a dream or something and I've got to grab something to write with something to write on write some stuff down and then hopefully go back to sleep after that happens but my actual preptober plans have been going really well. If you consider me having a crazy stack of sticky notes and note cards along with pieces of paper, the back sides of pieces of paper, as well as what now seem to be random files that are stacking up in folders and on my desktop and the computer. What I'm saying is I am not as organized about this as I should be, but I have so many ideas. I have so many characters. I have so many situations that now it's a matter of sifting through it. And one of the reasons that I love note cards and what I'm going to be spending whatever free time I have, I guess, the last week in October for Preptober will be putting all of this down on note cards. And I like to generate a big stack of note cards to have different scenes or situations happening. And I can shuffle the note cards around. I can add more note cards in. It makes it really easy for me to do that. I also like to create a note card for each character and jot down important information about the character so that I have that. Eventually, I transfer the note cards into some sort of file on my computer. I will probably end up using some sort of word processor like Microsoft Word or Google Docs just to keep track of the information. But part of the evolution of Preptober in getting my thoughts together for really being able to start on November 1st and have an amazing NaNoWriMo experience has been realizing that my situations and characters are more than one book, part of a series, which means I need to think about the pacing of it and which events would happen in book one, book two, book three. I like to think in the idea of a trilogy. And before I write book one, I want to have the whole trilogy planned out. Ideally, I will also use my rough ideas for a potential book four, five, six, a second trilogy, just to have some characters in the background so that they are mentioned in the first trilogy and readers would already be aware of their existence, you know. It wouldn't just come out of nowhere necessarily. Not that there's anything particularly wrong about that. I just think it's neat when writers do a lot of planning ahead. And if you're rereading or you're a careful reader, you remember things well, you're able to go, oh yeah, that was this character's cousin or the co-worker or the friend from school who was mentioned back several books ago. Wow, that character's coming back. If you can't tell, I'm super excited about the plans, but I also know that there's a lot of work to get done <laughs> in preparing for NaNoWriMo, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun work to do as a writer. I want to say thank you all. This journey has been so amazing, and it's only been 11 months. We're almost at the year mark. I started this BookTube AuthorTube channel on Halloween of 20. And I'm about to do a big rebranding. Everything's going to change on Halloween. Pay close attention to the channel. You're going to see a new banner up there, some new graphics. I'm looking forward to it. Every day is a good day for a book talk or a writer's journey discussion. If you're participating in NaNoWriMo, please feel free to leave comments down below. Tell me about your thoughts, your experiences, what you're doing. Or you can yell at me and tell me why you don't like NaNoWriMo or why you're too busy to do it this year or whatever you have to say. There'll be more specific details about my characters and stories in the November Writer's Journey videos as I actually go through the NaNoWriMo process. Peace.